Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Pearls of Grace Ministries Tuesday night Bible study. Uh, we welcome those of you who are watching after the live event, and we also welcome all of you who are with us tonight on Zoom. Uh, the bit I'm going to start with, I apologise to those of you who are listening later. I'm going to just pose a question for those of you on Zoom. Put your hand up if you can tell me what we're going to hear about tonight. And you've had a big clue. Oh, I've got two hands up. I can't see Maz or Kira or, or Vicky. But I've got two, two other hands up besides that. Well... You should have taken note of Take Us to the River with the angel with his feet on the land and on the oceans, because that has been mentioned before. And then the next one was We Will Ride. Will we stand up and fight? And that is our signature tune for this talk tonight. And then that last one, all about being in, in eternity with our Lord and singing holy, holy, holy and worthy, worthy, worthy. <coughs> you must know, we're in revelation. Yay. Yeah, amen. Do you know, when we started this series, I said to Giselle, oh, I do find this book difficult. I really don't understand it. And do you know, it has been an absolute pleasure to delve into it and work out what it means. I have so enjoyed it. And we're already tonight in chapter 20. So we've only got two more chapters to do when we finish the whole book. But chapter 20 is a whiz. Woo! Let me read it to you from the New Living Translation. Then I saw an angel come down from heaven with the key to the bottomless pit and a heavy chain in his hand. He seized the dragon, that old serpent, the devil, Satan, and bound him in chains for a thousand years. The angel threw him into the bottomless pit, which he then shut and locked so Satan could not deceive the nations anymore until the thousand years were finished. And afterward, he would be released again for a little while. Then I saw thrones and the people sitting on them had been given the authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their testimony about Jesus, for proclaiming the word of God. And I saw the souls of those who had not worshipped the beast or his statue, nor accepted his mark on their forehead or their hands. They came to life again, and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead... Oh, sorry, I've missed a line out. No. And they came to life and they came... Yeah, that's it. This is the first resurrection. The rest of the dead did not come back to life until the thousand years had ended. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. For them, the second death holds no power, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and will reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years end, Satan will be let out of his prison. He will go out to deceive the nations from every corner of the earth, which are called Gog, and Magog. He will gather them together for battle, a mighty host as numberless as sand along the shore. And I saw them as they went up on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded God's people and the beloved city. But fire from heaven came down on the attacking armies and consumed them. Then the devil who betrayed them was thrown into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur. Joining the beast and the false prophet. There they will be tormented day and night forever 
and ever. And I saw a great white throne. And I saw the one who was sitting on it. The earth and sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. And the books were opened, including the book of life. And the dead were judged according to the things written in the books, according to what they had done. The sea gave up the dead in it, and death and the grave gave up the dead in them. They were all judged according to their deeds. And death and the grave were thrown into the lake of fire. Hallelujah. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And anyone whose name was not found recorded in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Wow. Gosh, it's getting exciting, isn't it? Aren't you glad that you're believers? Aren't you glad that you're believers? In verses one to five, we see that Satan will be defeated. And the bottomless pit in verse one is not the same as hell. It's the abyss that we met in Revelation 9 and Revelation 11. Satan is not cast into hell immediately because God still has one task for him to perform. So he's confined in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. If you remember in Revelation 12, Satan was cast out of heaven. Well, now he's cast out of the earth as well. And having taken care of his enemies, the Lord is now free to establish his righteous kingdom on the earth. And we're told in verses four to six that saints will reign. That's R-E-I-G-N, not reign. We're going to reign with Jesus. And the phrase a thousand years is seen six times in this chapter. So that thousand years is important. And of course, we know a thousand years by the word millennium. And this millennium is the thousand year kingdom of Christ on earth. He's come again. Amen. And at last, Christ and his church will reign over the nations of the earth and Israel. And Israel will enjoy the blessings promised by the prophets, just as we will. But is this a literal kingdom or a spiritual one? Well, John wrote about a literal, physical resurrection of the dead and a literal kingdom on earth. But what's the purpose of this thousand year long kingdom? Well, for one thing, it'll be the fulfillment of God's promises. Not only his promises to Christ, but his promises to Israel. And Jesus had reaffirmed them to his disciples in Luke chapter 22. And I'll read that to you. It's just two verses, verses 29 and 30. And just as my father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in that kingdom. And you will sit on thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That's going to be part of our role, folks. To sit there with Jesus and judge. And this kingdom will be a worldwide worldwide display of Christ's glory. And it will be a time when all nature will be free from the bondage of sin. 
there'll be no more sin in that thousand year kingdom. It'll be the answer to the prayers of the saints. It's such a famous line that we say it without thinking, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. The answer to the prayers of the saints. Now we already know the tribulation martyrs will be raised from the dead and be given glorious thrones and rewards. The church is represented by the 24 elders that we talked about. Uh, a few weeks, a few months ago now, I should think, and, and they'll share in the rain as well. Now, some scholars think that the Old Testament saints will also be a part of this first resurrection. And I do too, if I'm honest. We'll all be raised. All believers will be raised in that first resurrection. And the Bible does teach the two resurrections. The first is of the saved, that's us, and leads to blessing. And the second is of all the lost and leads to judgment. If you want some confirmation of that, read, read Daniel chapter 12. I'm not going to read it out to you. I'll leave you to do that over the week. And these two resurrections will be separated by these 1,000 years. So looking at verse 6, this describes the special blessings um, of those who share in the first resurrection. And who will be sharing in Christ's glorious life. The resurrected believers will share in this life, reigning as kings and priests with Jesus. And they'll never experience that second death, the lake of fire. And during the millennium, the Earth's inhabitants will include citizens of the nations who bow in submission to Jesus Christ. To me, if the earth's got inhabitants that include citizens of the nations who bow in submission to Jesus Christ, there are still some people on the earth who will be saved. So there is even a chance during this millennium for those who haven't chosen to support and follow Jesus to have that chance. So we must never, ever give up hope, folks. Never give up hope. And during that time, we will finally see the spiritual forces of evil utterly destroyed. Amen. Now, this millennium kingdom is a kingdom of law. But... Those that haven't turned to Jesus by then within that kingdom will not lose their sinful hearts. There'll be some who will have the chance and, and if you like, repent in time, but there are going to be others who will still not change their mind. But it will be a, an air, a period of peace. It'll be a period of perfection. It'll be t a time when disobedience will be swiftly and justly judged. And this perfect environment, as wonderful as it is, cannot produce a perfect heart. So, as I say, there will be some people there who will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Men will still re revolt against God. And at the end of the millennium, Satan will be released from the pit. And he'll be allowed one last revolt against the Lord as final proof 
that the heart of man is wicked and can only be changed by God's grace. And there'll be a rebellion, as we know, against Jesus. And the battle will see Israel as the focal point. God will deal with the rebellion swiftly and efficiently. And Satan, of course, will be cast into hell. Alleluia and amen. And I could finish there, but I won't. The beast and the false prophet will still be suffering when they get in that lake of fire. As they're thrown into that lake of fire, they will still be suffering. They will be reaping their rewards. Now, from verse 11 onwards, God is about to wrap up human history. But one great event remains. There will be a second resurrection. The unsaved will be raised and will stand before God's judgment. And this is the judgment of the unbelievers only. And there won't be any rewards. Those of us who have been saved and are taken up in the second resurrection will be taken before the throne of grace and be forgiven. Before God can usher in his new heaven and earth, he has to deal with sin. We know that. He's a righteous God. He has to deal with sin. And the people who chose to go their own way will be judged. Every sinner will be held accountable for the truth that he and she ignored and the deeds that they have done in their lives. But Jesus does consider their works, but he only considers them so that he can determine what punishment they deserve. The punishment that they will endure in hell. And each lost sinner will receive just what is due to him, no more, no less. And those people are not allowed, not able to question the Lord's decision. No one will be able to defend himself or accuse God of unrighteousness. At this judgment, everyone is guilty. Most of us expect our judgment to be based on whether we're guilty or not. But the people in Christ, as I've said, will be forgiven. And even though we're believers, we don't deserve that. If God wasn't a righteous God who loved his children and knew what was in our hearts and what we truly believed, we too would be judged and sent down to that lake of fire. It's only through his grace and his mercy that we come before him and are forgiven. We escape that terrible judgment. No matter who we are or how terrible our past, we could go into heaven and find Hitler there or Mussolini. We could go into heaven and find the Cray brothers there. We could go into heaven and not find certain people there. Certain people that we probably expect to see there. People who have been revered during their lifetime as followers of Christ. But in actual fact, 
weren't born again believers and pulled the wall over everybody's eyes. We'll be amazed at the people that we see when we get to eternity. And as believers, we will have our names written in the book of life. Little me, who amongst all the billions of people on this planet is nothing, just a little ant, my name will be in the book of life and so will yours. Absolutely chatting, absolutely. And by surrendering our, surrendering our lives to God in Jesus Christ and trusting him completely for our salvation, we'll be able to go up to that book and find our name. Wow. And remember, we can't earn a place in that book. Whatever we've done, whatever we've said, we cannot earn a place in that book. We can only receive it as a gift. And I know I've said before that as human beings, we often find it difficult to accept a gift, whether it's a physical gift or a word like somebody gave me the other day saying that something that I'd said was, was really good. And as, as human beings, we often find that really hard to accept but that's a gift it's a gift from god and that is what what it is to be in that book of life it's just a wonderful gift from our loving father so we shan't suffer the terrible terrors of the second death John 5, 24 quotes Jesus when he said, I assure you, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death into life. Isn't that wonderful? As believers, we have moved from death to life. Our names are in the book of life. We will live with him for eternity. And that is the message of Revelation chapter 20. Aren't you thrilled to be a believer? Aren't you thrilled? to know that we are going to live in the glory of heaven. Doesn't it give you something to look forward to? Amen. That's all I have for tonight. I hope you've found something in that that you can chew over during the week. Uh, for those of you that are listening to home at home after the, the Zoom meeting, I'm going to close down now. It's been lovely to have you with us. And remember, if you want to ask us any questions, you can contact us through our website, which will be listed below, www.pogmuk.com. <laughs> I can never remember .co.uk or .com. It's .com. So thank you for joining us tonight. Shalom. Shalom.